Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. If you're watching this series live as the episodes go up, if you missed the community tab post from yesterday explaining why we didn't have an episode yesterday, check that out when you get a second, and uh, that should fill in the blanks for you quite nicely. But I am back, and we're gonna do we're gonna go into uh, a little bit more um, discussion of the crafting system. But we can't do that per se until stuff is done curing. So what we're gonna have to do to start out is just maybe do a little bit of exploring. We have some additional cooking to do, so we'll probably do that, like I said, and get our cooking skill all the way up. Um, but that's also gonna require that I get a little bit of extra wood, I believe. So let's have a look at how much we need. I've got some birch, which is nice. I also need to go ahead and convert this newsprint into tinder. So let's see, how am I doing on food? I think I've got some outside, so. I think I'll kick off by just getting rid of some of the stuff in my inventory, which would be a nice little quick demonstration of stuff we've talked about earlier in the series, but just a verification of, you know, different things that you can do. Let's, uh... Mm, no, I'll just eat the one for now. Oh, some of the smaller things that you can, you know, kind of deal with and harvest in your inventory. Also, I do need, and I appreciate the, uh, the quick reminder that someone left me on this. We need to go ahead and put the the bear hide down now that I'm back. We also have some guts as well. And I believe there's more guts and of course more meat on that bear. But anyway, speaking of inventory management, right? I'm going to start by going to, well, hang on. Let's eat that food. Because moose meat is... It does not belong to a carnivore. We don't have to worry about parasites eating the moose meat. I'm almost out of water, so I'll have to keep an eye on that as well. But let's go ahead and go to our fire starting section. I kind of want to put these cardboard matches down, but because we have lots of wood matches, I think I'm going to do that. One of the most important lessons you can learn in inventory management in the long dark, maybe we'll make this kind of an inventory management episode, is how little things can add up. So you might have, you might think to yourself, oh, cardboard matches, other than only 0.22 pounds. Why would I drop those? Well, if you have five of them, that's a pound. And would you drop a pound item that you weren't using? If you had wooden matches or a fire striker, for instance, which is a thing if you didn't know that, you can get a fire striker in the long dark. We'll probably find one if we're lucky before the end of the series. But um, anyway, so so I did put down those uh, those matches because I have... 24 wood matches. They're better matches than cardboard, and um, yeah, that's we're, we're just going with that. So the newsprint here can actually be harvested into two tinder plugs. Let's go ahead and do that. We have some tinder plugs on us, of course, but we want more. We have this newsprint roll, which we're going to harvest. Newsprint rolls give you four tinder plugs. Remember what I mentioned earlier in the series about how tinder is something uh, you need to have a very, 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 very good excuse to be out of Tinder, even on high difficulty levels, because you can get Tinder from so many things. I mean, look, you can get two Tinder plugs from a stick. So it's pretty easy to keep a stock of Tinder with you. And this birch bark, of course, also counts as Tinder, which I'll keep on me, as do the cattail heads. We need to read the Survive the Outdoors book, um, and I may be able to do a little bit of that. I've only got uh, zero or five hours research at the moment. Let's go ahead and do three hours. Because I doubt we're going to be able to do much more than that before the sun goes completely down. Okay. So now we're just going to research the final two when we get up. But before I get too ex... Oh, hello. All right, we've got a bit of a blizz uh, blizzard outside. And I don't have that much water, actually. So what I'm going to do is drink my herbal tea. So that I don't have to drink as much water. That'll give me improved rest. In some situations, you might make an argument that I save that herbal tea for a time when I actually needed the improved rest. But for now, we're just going to go with anything that we could do, basically, to bring our thirst all the way up and topped off. And let's now sleep for as long as the game will let us. Ten hours should fully recover us. And as you've probably noticed, I can't recall if I said it explicitly earlier in the series, but if you've prob as you've probably noticed, it's about ten hours of sleeping, maybe 11 hours, before a full thirst meter completely empties out. So be aware of that as well. Also, it looks like I might be able to squeeze one more hour out of this. Yes, I can. Very good. Which I need to do because the sun was not quite up yet. So it's now the beginning of the day. And first things first, let's, um, we're not gonna be able to get much out of our water. Okay, still sounds pretty crappy outside. 
Let's see if I can get in one hour of research as a way of passing time. Too dark to read. Is it, is it really? Oh, give it like five more seconds and it won't be. Come on, game. Come on. I know, I, I know it's... <laughs> We're waiting for a pixel. We're waiting, literally, waiting for a pixel. The sun just needs to come up by like one more fraction of a pixel. And we'll be good. Thank you! All right. So that's one more hour. I, You think I can squeeze the last one out? Let's try it. We might get too thirsty. We're going to get too thirsty. We're going to get too thirsty. Crap, 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 crap. Okay, damn. All right, so we need to do something to get water. I don't want to... See, I guess I could break the shelf down here. I mean, I'm not really using this shelf. Or I could break that shelf down. Yeah, let's break this shelf down. That'll do. I just... When I'm in the trapper's cabin, it's a personal preference thing. I could also break the bench down, I guess. But um, I don't like breaking apart the furniture too much because it takes away from the atmosphere. If, if you're not as aesthetic about your stuff, then by all means, when you go into a new environment, just break down all the furniture and get the wood. But I like to make sure that there's still some semblance of, uh, of, uh, furnishment. You know, what's the word I'm looking for? Furnished? Unfurnished? Yeah. Furniture. Furnishment. Things that, that are furnishing the space. Anyway, uh, we're not going to burn the book yet because we're not done reading it. We don't really have a terrific chance of starting the fire unless we use some of our lamp oil. So notice we have two choices of accelerant, the accelerant or the lamp oil. I'll go ahead and use the lamp oil just because, frankly, I just don't want to wait for the fire to start. Fire starting skill went up, which is about to go up also when we finish our research. I will go ahead and pile both pieces of reclaimed wood on there, and let's... Usually, when you go for an hour, a little bit over an hour, you should be able to swing 0.6 gallons. Boiling the water takes less time than melting it. So you might be thinking, oh gosh, now you've used up most of your time. What do you do? Actually, we might not get this. I might have underestimated. Nope, didn't get it. Damn. Okay. I don't know the precise numbers. I've heard that it, and there's comments on this when we were talking about Fahrenheit and Celsius. I've heard that when you're using Celsius, the numbers are a lot more round, even if you live in a place, as I do, where the imperial system is still used and you think in terms of Fahrenheit and pounds and gallons. Um, when you are using the metric system in the game, the numbers are very directly associated. Like one hour is, uh, one hour will get you one... Um, liter of water or something. I don't know what the exact numbers are. It's just hopefully you understand what I'm what I'm trying to convey is that you know the, the numbers are a lot, uh, are much easier kind of correlated with each other and connected to one another as far as like um, what you can get from certain amounts of time. They're easy to remember as opposed to the um, Fahrenheit amounts. I don't worry about it that much, but it leads to moments like you just saw where I can uh, guesstimate badly. So you know one thing I haven't talked about, but I'll mention really quickly. You might be thinking to yourself, hey, uh, hey, Hadrian, what, what, uh, what, what happens if you drink that water? Uh, well, you get dysentery. <laughs> or at least I believe you get, a, you get a risk. Yeah, we're working on it, Mark. Uh, you, you at least have a risk of dysentery. How much, how many? I have four sticks. I can probably boil that if I just start a fire with some sticks. Let's do that. Or at least boil some of it. I should have tried to boil just point four instead of point six. I thought about it. Of course, again, while I'm doing this, I know we're not focus on any, focusing on any particular topic at the moment, but time is passing and all of these hides under my feet are curing. So once I finish some inventory management, we'll see how much time is left and then maybe go out and explore the world a little bit. Without, of course, me telling you where I'm going or what I'm looking for. Just kind of see what other items we might be able to stumble across. All right, so there's that. One, two, three. Okay, that's still not going to be very much, but it'll give me something to drink. So let's just do 0 0.2 gallons this time. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Just need to boil. Glad I caught myself. It's so automatic for me when you, when I, you know, am going to get water. I'll do melt, then boil every time. Like, I'm very unaccustomed to having to starting a fire and then having water to uh, deal with. Okay, so there's that. As I was saying, you get dysentery, and 
I have literally never gotten dysentery ever, 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 ever in the lawn dark because it's so easy, as I was saying earlier in the series, to boil or purify your water. If you have tablets, you can use tablets. I very rarely use tablets. I can almost almost always boil the water as long as I'm a little smarter than I was a second ago, which viewers of my Against All Odds series can verify. I usually am, knock on wood. Um, as long as you are you know, good with your estimates of how much time you have on a fire, then you are good to go. Let me step outside and get a little bit more moose meat. We're going to do that last hour of research and hope that the blizzard that we are standing in abates. Hello. Get two pieces of wolf meat, or moose meat. We still have a bunch of it to cook as well. Oh, yeah. All right, there's that. And let us go ahead... And research this. I'm going to keep the book on me because, again, now we can burn it. This will also increase my fire starting skill. Let's have a quick look. Or will it? There we go. Let's have a quick look at that skill. In case you're curious. 55% chance to start fires, as opposed to, I believe, was a 55, a 50 or 45% chance to start. And fires also last 10% longer now that we are level 2 in our fire starting. We're almost level 2 in our cooking, but until we have more wood, we, uh can't really do anything more. I mean, I could break down some items in here, like I was saying, but I, I, I don't really want to. So why don't we go ahead and sleep for four hours? We'll probably only get two and a half to three hours sleep, but that's okay. Good. And the storm has gone away. So with that being done, let's take one more look at our inventory. Again, I'm, when I'm doing inventory management, I want to go through it category by category. You can look at the main category if you want and just sort everything and, and look at it as one big you know, collection of things to manage, but I think it's a little bit simpler to um, look at it category by category and really break it down for yourself since you have the opportunity. I'm going to step over to the stove here and put down some of my tinder because I don't need this much tinder on me. We use the birch bark. That was intentional. Let's go ahead and drop the tinder plugs. I'll keep the cattail heads. Five or six tinder on you at all times whenever you're leaving uh, shelters. Probably a good idea just to be extra safe. You can carry even less than that if you don't want to have two-thirds of a pound of, of tinder on you, but that's how that works. I have three emergency stems. I probably only need two of them as long as the th as long as I remember where the third stem is and come back and get it if I use one. What do emergency stems do, Hadrian? I hear some of you asking. Well, they actually give you a set amount of life. I think it's uh, between 15 and 20%, maybe 20% flat of life instantly. And no matter how exhausted you are, encumbrance will still affect your speed, but it will boost you to be able to actually sprint again. Again, if you're too encumbered to sprint, you won't be able to. But And if you are encumbered to some extent, it will slow down your sprint the same way that it would normally. But it basically reinvigorates you in extremely dangerous moments. So it's an emergency stimulant and it works quite well i've used them in the series before i don't use them very often because again it's one of those a, a lot of the things that i do in the long dark are like for instance the fact that i don't use the cartography feature that i talked about earlier in the series a lot are just based on the fact that i learned to play the game before a lot of these mechanics existed so some of it is just me still needing to learn and some of it is me not really wanting to learn and preferring to play a certain way and i like to push the envelope a little bit and and not use the emergency stims emergency stems unless I absolutely have to, but you don't have to play that way. So let's open this back up. Let's go back to the medical cabinet. I've got a couple of bottles of antibiotics and I probably only need one of the bottles. So let's transfer that. The food I'll keep on me. We have two can openers. Let's go ahead and put one of the can openers up in this locker. I remember someone telling me in the comments that I had two can openers. Good point. Flares, notice how heavy they are. I usually carry two flares at a time, and I'll drop the rest. It's just a general good rule of thumb. And then anything else? We've got a couple of whetstones, which we can use to sharpen our stuff. Um, our hatchets and hunting knives are in decent condition. So while I step outside here, I'll cook at the end of the episode. We're going to look around first because this weather is beautiful. So while I'm headed this direction, let me go ahead and talk to you about sharpening tools. Because someone brought this up in a comment, and I, I, I didn't write down the name of the person who mentioned it, but thank you so much for bringing this up because this is a really good point. Not every skill in the game 
is listed on your skills journal. This is actually not every skill that can be improved. And not every skill works in quite the same way. Um, but, but it's still very similar. An example is the sharpening skill. There's no sharpening skill on this list. There may well be in a future update, but right now there's not. However, when you sharpen an item with a whetstone, whether it's a hatchet or a knife, you'll notice that you will get a sharpening skill. And the higher your sharpening skill is, the more you'll sharpen an item, again, whether it's a knife or a, or a hatchet, each time that you sharpen it. So, the and also another thing that's not on this um, list, or it, at least it didn't used to be, but it is now, the mending skill. I think... I might have to go back and check that comment. I think that person might have said that mending's not on it, but they're perfectly right in terms of a few patches ago, but this is now on the list. So this is, mending is an example of why I expect sharpening to eventually be on the list. But, um, and of course there are now skill books as well for mending. So they actually allow you to improve your mending by reading. So you might be able to improve your sharpening skill by, by reading a book. I'm not sure about that. That seems a little bit far-fetched, but um, mending didn't used to be a skill either. And you could improve your mending the more you did it. And the more you did it, the more your stuff would get repaired each time. So just know that the sharpening skill is a separate thing. And what sharpening does for you, first of all, if your blades are too dull, if they're dangerously dull, when we make our way back this direction, we'll chop up some of these limbs. Those are very, very, especially that limb will probably yield a lot of wood. If, you're, if your tools are very, very low condition, they actually risk breaking when you use them. So if you're chopping up wood with a hatchet that's like less than 20% condition, sometimes less than 30, you might lose your hatchet in the middle of that activity and it's just gone. There's no, there's no salvaging it. There's no fixing it once it's ruined. You can find a new hatchet or you can go to a forge in the Lawn Dark. There are only two in the world. I won't tell you where they are, but there are two at present in February 2018. There are two forges and... You can make an improvised knife or improvised hatchet using scrap metal and other materials that you find in the world. Those, however, unless you're playing on uh, an interloper level difficulty, I say an interloper level difficulty because I could mean either interloper or a custom game that is using interloper-like settings, you cannot sharpen improvised items with whetstones. Why? <laughs> you might be wondering, why the distinction? Well, when you're playing on interloper difficulty, the discoverable knives and hatchets are actually not in the game at all. You can't find them in the same way you can't find the rifle. So you have to make improvised tools. So it wouldn't be fair if you couldn't sharpen those tools once you had them. And actually, to tell you the absolute truth, I haven't tested this since Interloper was announced, so it's possible that a subsequent patch has changed these rules. So maybe check the comments, because I'm sure someone is perfectly willing to jump in and, and make sure that that's clarified for folks. And thank you in advance if you do happen to know whether that's changed. All right, so this is the uh, clearing where we found the bow and arrow down there. I will be talking in a coming episode about how to use the bow and arrow, by the way. We've only got one arrow, so I want to be careful. But we're not going to focus on that just yet. I still want to focus mostly on a little bit of exploration, inventory management, and cooking. Speaking of inventory management, well, let me step inside here and I'll make sure that I got rid of everything I could have. I'm pretty sure that I did, and hopefully the methodology that I'm using is pretty clear. Because you can sort stuff by weight, it's very easy to tell what's weighing you down, and of course you can see which items you already have you know, an abundance of. So it's just a matter of thinking, what do I really need to have on me? Some people may actually choose to deliberately leave more stuff behind. Okay, I see some items. This could be a nice replacement for my, uh, for my shells. Some people will deliberately choose to leave more items behind and only leave the house with things they need for a particular trip. I like to be a little bit more of a pack rat because you never know. Okay, we found a ragged wolf scarf and some charcoal. Now, the Ragged Wolf Scarf is not going to be better, even once I repair it, than a Wool Toque. I just know from practice. But um, anyway, yeah, some people might choose to, you know, approach things a little bit differently. Uh, in that they will, you know, just carry the minimum as they leave and then just come back for what they need. But I just like to be ready for anything, especially playing on higher difficulties. And I think once you're playing on Stalker or Interloper or some equivalent, you generally have to... Um, 
Okay, good. We got a decent support vest. We'll take a look at that in a second. You generally have to be a lot more cautious with, you know, what you leave behind. Oh, there's an MRE too. Very nice. That's just a picture frame, I think. Or maybe. Is it a picture frame? I'm not sure. Whatever it is, I can't pick it up. Nothing over here, nothing over here. Dead guy. And some painkillers, nice. Dead guy with nothing on him. You're useless to me, dude. I'm sorry, that was rude. Um, hang on, let's grab this book. Something's gotta go. Okay, so speaking of inventory management, we now will need some additional work. One thing I can do, well, no. See, I could break this up for some reclaimed wood. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. It's already broken off anyway. And I don't think, unless I were to break up, I could break up this bench for some reclaimed wood too. Yeah, tell you what, let's just do this. Because I need to go ahead and get that water boiled. These pillows can be cut up using the knife. and It will reduce the knife's condition, but it can be cut up. And yes, by the way, cleaned weapons, sharpened hatchets, cleaned rifles, do better in battle than uncleaned or unsharpened ones. So, just a little tip for you there. If you ever find yourself in a struggle with a wolf and wonder why your knife or hatchet didn't do more damage, it might be because you haven't sharpened it in a while. <laughs> Alright, so we found another pry bar. 100% condition. I think that's better than the one I have. There's never... Oh, it's 1% better than the one I have. There's never really a reason to have more than one pry bar on you, so I'm just going to leave the old one behind. Let's step into this uh, area right here again. I'm going to throw down a fire quickly. Yeah, right there. That's good for me. We use wood matches, cattail head, and one of the books we found. Notice we now have a 95% chance. So I guess we started with 50% and now level 2 is 55%. So it's just a 5% boost for that first skill increase. I think the boosts do get a little bit bigger as you climb in skill. Come on. Come on. Which is nice. I'm not going to lie, I just had a like a slight panic moment because I realized that I hadn't really looked at my microphone meter to make sure my microphone's plugged in. For those of you who have been following the channel for about a month, you know that several weeks back I had an issue pop up with my microphone randomly not recording, which has never happened to me in years of doing YouTube. Um, it was plugged in, nothing indicated it wasn't working, but it didn't record my voice. And uh, <laughs> ever since then I've been a little bit more paranoid. Anyway, tangent, let's go ahead and pile some stuff on this fire. We're going to boil 0.4 gallons, which is all we have left. I know I mentioned dysentery earlier in the episode. Um, it's very easily avoided. Just boil your water or use purification tablets. If you, I mean, the, the, the teacher in me wants to say, well, if you have to drink unsafe water, then drink it. But I never have. Think about that for a second. And maybe that let that be the lesson that you take away from this discussion of uh, dysentery. Because I just, I don't think that you're going to find it. Actually, we can make some rosehip tea right now. Oh no, that's, I think I can prepare some though. Yeah, we can prepare a couple of things. Let's go ahead and prepare. This takes some time to do, so I'm not going to be able to do this for long, unless I put more wood on the fire. But yeah, maybe just let that be what you take away from this. In hundreds of hours of the long dark play, I have never drank unsafe water, except maybe experimentally one time, and I've never gotten dysentery. So, easily avoided. Which is why I don't say that much about it. I guess we will... Yeah, let's go ahead and add some more wood to this. I found... No, not the books. Let's just add that, and I want to go ahead and... Continue preparing our reishi mushrooms and our rose hips. Again, especially rose hips, if I didn't mention this earlier, rose hips are heavy. Might not seem like it's that big of a deal, but having the rose hips in your inventory prepared as opposed to not actually does make a bit of a difference to how much weight you're carrying. So just know that making that change, making that adjustment and preparing the stuff you have in your inventory. I'll get the old man's beard stuff prepared soon too. I haven't done that for a few episodes actually. Got sidetracked by other things. 
That's okay. Okay, it is, um, feels like 70 degrees. Air temperature is 40, so it's actually still pretty warm. We're going to, yeah, see, I really need to take advantage of this fire. So I'm going to go ahead and melt some more snow. Again, if you have a fire going and you've got it for another hour, really think to yourself before you walk away from it. As far as what you can do with it before you walk away from it. All right, hunger-wise, I'm getting up there. Let's go ahead and eat these sardines. I actually think that was a partially consumed can of sardines. And let me take a torch from the fire. Notice that took 10 minutes away from the fire's life. Good thing to be aware of. How encumbered am I? Oh, not very encumbered at all. Good. Of course, that water I just made is heavy. That's something to be mindful of. And we are 26 minutes into this episode, aren't we? And the thing is, I'm recording this not long before it's going to go live, so I've got to get back to the cabin and, uh, and end this. I know I could have just stepped inside there and saved it, but I want to go ahead and make my way back this direction. Unfortunately, we're not that tired, so I might have to break down some wood on the way back so that I can have a fire to burn in the cabin and be cooking some meat as we begin the next episode. I'm going to say this again, not because I'm trying to admonish anybody, but just because I want to encourage everyone who's learned of the Lawn Dark for the first time to keep this in mind. If you're watching me play this, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I haven't been to this place yet, let me keep watching this series so I can learn my way around. If you want to do that, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad way to do it, or that you should stop. I just want to encourage you maybe to think about whether or not you've considered, you know, the exploration aspect of the game, and, you know, whether or not you want to spoil it for yourself. A lot of us, you know, don't mind spoilers. We might even want spoilers. And if that's the case, have at it. Do your thing. I'm happy to, you know, kind of be an example of how to get different places in Mystery Lake. But obviously, I've very deliberately with this series said over and over, I don't want to spoil people by default. I don't want to offer spoilers. Yes, I'm turning around for a reason. There's usually something up here. Well, sometimes it's kind of important, but I don't see it. Okay, let's go this way. And let's also try not to get lost. Believe it or not, I still kind of know generally where I'm going. Um, anyway, yeah, so just be, be mindful of that. Like, as I notice that as I'm going from place to place in Mystery Lake, I'm generally not talking about how, where I'm going or how I'm getting there. That's by design. Both Survival School series have been built around that kind of thinking. Hey, bunny. And I just want to make sure that if you're watching the series... Oh, good. Five cedar firewood if I break this down. Pro tip... You need to break stuff down, as we talked about earlier in the series. You need to uh, have light to break stuff down. But, hang on. Crap. I can't quite tell where I am right now. Oh, wait a second. Maybe I did get turned around. I think I did. I did get turned around when I was trying to look up there, I think. Oh, yeah, I got badly turned around. Well, I'm glad time passed and... Uh, we got some light back, but as I was saying, pro tip, you need light to break things down. As long as you have light, and this is, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a playing the system thing, um, because you can really exploit it if you're bad about it. But you only need there to be light when you start doing the thing. When it comes to breaking down items, it's not true for reading. You need light for the entire time that you're reading. But if you're breaking down a log... If you're breaking down a table, anything you're breaking down requires light to break down, but all you have to do is have something lit for that first... Or have enough moonlight, you know, to where you can you can see it. Uh, for, the, for those first few seconds that you're breaking it down, and then however long it takes to break it down, that time will pass, you'll be in the complete dark, but the game will let you do it. Alright, so I'm going to be walking back to the cabin with 10 pieces of cedar firewood. And at the beginning of the next episode, we are going to cook the rest of that meat, which all of this has also helped us pass some time. And I am hoping that by the end of the next episode, we're going to get to have a fun discussion about crafting items with the workbench. And we also need to go back out. That bear corpse should still be there. 
We need to go back out and see if we can get the meat off of that bear. Wasn't top of my priority list this episode. I wanted to find other gear, which reminds me, hang on. We can only put this sport vest on the inner layer here, but oh, it's actually not as good as the shell in either category. So we might just end up breaking that down before long. That's a shame. Again, I, I need a proper jacket, but um, but yeah, I wanted to go out and find gear this episode. We'll pay a visit to the bear corcus, bear corcus carcass corpse, one of those <laughs> bear carcass uh, next episode. And we're 30 minutes in. I'm taking my sweet time, aren't I? This episode's going to be late. I'm sorry, guys. I got sleep, though. Sleep is good. I'm not going to lie. I'm still yawning like crazy. Not right now. I'm having fun. But on the way home earlier from a morning appointment, I was uh, yawning like a madman. Like machine gun yawns. All-nighters will do that to you when you're over 30, apparently. Which I am. So, let's step into... <laughs> Half the viewers just went, WHAT?! Most people I mentioned that on YouTube are, for some reason, shocked. Alright, let's, um... Let's see, we do have some moose meat. I'm gonna step inside first and put down a bunch of stuff. But actually, I'm not gonna do any of that. We're back inside. That's a save point. I will stop here. <laughs> in the next one, we're going to put all that wood down. Well, actually, we're going to keep it. We're going to put it on a fire. We're going to cook all the moose meat, go check on the bear meat, cook, lot, cook lots and lots of stuff, get up to level two cooking, probably close to level three cooking with all the cooking we have to do. And then before long, we'll be talking about crafting and the workbench. And I do, again, want to encourage you guys, if there are beginner, beginners or intermediate level topics that you want me to cover in the coming episodes, let me know because... For the final five episodes or so, I am going to cover some slightly more advanced topics and some of the topics that were mentioned to me when we, when I did a kind of a feeler thread before I even announced that this was the series I was going to do. I've got some ideas from that that I want to incorporate as well. So anyway, we're standing in the dark here. I'm sure this is riveting viewing. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 3 p.m. Eastern time, except for yesterday because, well, check the community tab. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.